guys um hold on one second i'm sorry i had the tv up a little loud um so hi hi mahusi i hope i pronounced your name right um, I'm going to wait to see if we can get a couple of more folks to join in. Um, in the chat area, the chat box, I um, put in, awesome, thank you, Mahusi. I um, put the link in to uh, my nurse aide exam prep virtual coaching sessions, okay? Um, this coaching session will be dedicated to whatever you need help with, okay? So whether it's the written uh, portion of this certification exam or uh, the manual skills portion, okay, of the exam. And today I'm going to talk to you all about investing, um, you know, investing in your certification exam. Hi, Smiley. Uh, five, Smiley. Prometric, you'll have five uh, skills, okay? You'll always have hand hygiene and the indirect care skills um, or behaviors. Um, you'll, you know, have a measurement skill, and then the other two skills are going to be random bedside skills. I knew what you meant, Smiley. <laughs> Awesome, congratulations, Mahusi. Ah, understandable, understandable. What, Mahusi, uh, who do you test under? Everybody congratulate Mahusi. He passed his uh, skills exam. Mm. Mahusi, if you could type in who your, um, you're welcome, type in who your authorized administrator is. Whether it's Prometric, Pearson View, Credentia, American Red Cross, Headmaster, or, you know, your, your, your college system, if your college system. Okay, Prometric. All right. Okay. Um, yeah. I have students right now taking, uh, you know, both e exams for Prometric, taking both the written and skills. Um, and they're telling me that the written is pretty hard. All right, guys, we got about eight uh, folks in here now. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do some serious talking with you all, okay? And the reason why I decided to do this was because I had uh, two students to um, take their manual skills test yesterday under Prometric, and neither one passed. <sighs> so this is a first for me, and you know, first for those two students. Okay, um, I'm gonna talk to you how I talk to my students, 
Okay. And I've already told y'all in a previous live stream that you have to invest in your future. You have to invest in your success. Okay. Um, and part of your future, part of your success is this certification exam. Okay. Um, you can't make any excuses. You, you can't make excuses you know, in regards to your instructor, not being a good instructor, um, you not having time, uh, you know, to study, um, you know, whatever, whatever excuse you are giving, you got to put those excuses on a jet plane and you have got to invest um, in your future. You, you've got to, okay? Um, so today I'm going to talk to you about ways that you can invest. Okay. And these are, uh, you know, methods that I, I, you know, tell my students, um, how they can invest in their future. Um, and also nurse aid clients who, um, who sign up for my virtual coaching sessions. Okay. One, one. Um, listen to your instructor, okay? Follow the directions of your instructor, whether you think that, you know, they're a good instructor or not, okay? You have to follow their directions, okay? If there's anything that you question about, um, you know, whatever your instructor tells you, do your own research, okay? Do your own research about whatever it is that you're questioning. You have to pay attention, okay? Um, really close attention to the lectures, okay? Because your lectures, uh, all the information that's given during lection or, le excuse me, lecture or, you know, during the didactic portion of your training is that information, that knowledge and understanding you're going to have to foster in order to pass the written portion of your uh, CEP or competency evaluation program. Okay, that's your certification exam. Um, so no matter how your no matter how your instructor um, renders the didactic portion of your training, um, you know what way you learn best, right? So if you learn by highlighting notes or writing down notes, if you learn, um, you know, ha having your notes done in outline format, then that's what you need to do. You know if you're understanding or not understanding certain subject matters. Um, and so for those subject matters that you're not grasping a good understanding of, you need to let your instructor know, okay? You need to let your instructor know. Um, and then you need to take what your instructor gives to you and study outside of the training, outside of your training class. You have to study, okay? Especially when you go from one subject area to another, you can't forget about what you learned previously and then just focus on what you're learning for that day. You have to incorporate or integrate um, what you've learned previously into what you're learning now and what you'll be learning in the future. So it's a continuous study, studying cycle, okay? Like you, you just can't stop studying what you previously learned. You have to learn how to integrate all of that together. And again, it's not about just gaining knowledge. It's about gaining a sound understanding. Because again, you are going to need this knowledge and understanding for the written portion of your certification exam. You're going to have to know and understand what the nurse aid scope of practice is 
Um, and the scope of practice differs from state to state. OK, but you have got to know that for the written exam. You have got to be very familiar with residents' rights, OK, residents' rights. Um, you've got to be familiar with the different disease processes, OK? Um, you have to know what you can do as a CNA if um, you know, you have a patient, resident, or client that starts going to the left. If you have a, you know, a patient, resident, or client that is complaining of chest pain, you need to be able to uh, determine, like, what disease process, um, you know, would cause that person to have chest pain. Um, especially if they say, you know, that chest pain is radiating to their shoulder and down their arm, right? You have to have a good idea as to, okay, you know, what's going on with this person, right? We all know with angina, which is chest pain, uh, especially if it's radiating pain, it's usually what? Somebody type it in for me. What? does that usually signify? Angina with radiating pain. I'm gonna give y'all a couple of minutes, okay? This is, I'm schooling y'all today now. I'm schooling y'all today. I'm gonna give y'all a couple of minutes and if anybody wants to, you know, respond, go ahead and type your answer. Um, or your response in the comment section, okay? What, what signifies angina with radiating pain? You know, usually radiates to the neck and the shoulder and down the arm, right? What is that significant uh, or indicate? Nobody knows? Come on, guys. Nobody knows. I'm going to tell y'all what I be telling my students. Y'all are killing me. And y'all are killing me. Guess. Take a wild guess. Try. Attempt. Invest. Invest. Okay? Invest in your future. Try. Attempt to answer the question, right? Because during your written exam, you don't want to not answer a question. So you, you need to answer all questions. So Dorota has a heart. And so I'm thinking that what you're saying is probably a heart attack, right? And you would be correct, okay? You would be correct. Now, what if you had a question on the exam, okay, on your written exam that stated your, your resident and MI, awesome, that's correct, MI, heart problems, yes. So you have a question on your exam that states that, you know, while providing care to a resident, uh, you know, the resident complains that um, he or she feels like there's an elephant, you know, sitting on their chest and that they have a tingling, tingling sensation down their right arm, okay? Which answer choice would you choose, all right? Which answer choice would you choose? An MI or a CBA, okay? Patient is telling you, it feels like an elephant is sitting on my chest and I have you know, like a tingling sensation moving down my arm. Would you select an MI or would you select answer choice CBA? Okay, that's not an answer choice, Mahusi. That's not an answer choice. Your, your two answers, I'm giving you two answer choices. What do you think that what those two symptoms would indicate 
an MI or a CVA because those are symptoms, right? You can't see that that pain, right? You can't feel that person's pain, right? So it's it's a symptom what the patient tells you. All right, so Mahusi says MI and Eunice says CVA. Okay, the correct answer is MI. Okay, and myocardial infarction. Valerie says CVA too. But the correct answer choice, Mahusi got it, an MI. Okay, myocardial infarction, a heart attack. Now, what, what, why did you choose? a heart attack? Why did you choose a CVA? And I can answer both of those questions for you, right? Mahusi chose heart attack because the person said, it feels like an elephant is sitting on my chest, right? Angina, chest pain, pressure, right? Angi angina can be uh, like pressure. It can be like a sharp pain, a dull pain, an aching pain, right? Any type of chest pain is an angina. Okay, so that's why Mahusi chose heart attack. Valerie and Eunice, right, chose CVA because of the tingling sensation, right, down their arm. But remember, with a heart attack, you can have radiating pain, okay? That pain can be a burning sensation. It can be um, a sharp pain that's radiating down your arm. It can also be like a tingling sensation or a burning and tingling sensation. It can be an ache, okay? So what, what should have given you that answer was the elephant sitting on the person's chest, okay? Elephant sitting on the person's chest. Doesn't matter if it's radiating down the right arm, radiating down the left arm, okay? Or it could be radiating down both arms, okay? But what you have to, you when you're looking at the answer choices, you gotta look at like what stands out to you, right? What stands out to you? And what stood out to Mahusi was the elephant, you're right? The sensation of an elephant sitting on that person's chest, that heaviness, okay? Um, if you're testing under Prometric, that's a question, okay? That's a, that's a question that is on the exam, all right? So just know what to look for and, and that will help you choose the correct answer choice, okay? It can be it can be either arm Valerie, okay? It can be like the left arm radiating down the left. It can be radiating down the right, or it could even be both, okay? For the heart attack, all right? Or sometimes it, they don't even have no pain. For females, a lot of times, uh, you know, that's the silent killer for for women uh, because a lot of times we we have nothing except maybe nausea and headache. And we're just thinking we, we got a bug and it's actually our heart, right? Okay. Um, you're welcome, you're welcome. So it's important for you to know, it's important for you to know the body systems and related, um, related um, disease processes uh, with each body system. And it's important what you need to do. Now, as a nurse aide, okay, as a nurse aide, if that person is lying flat on the bed and they tell you that they are having pain or they're telling you that, you know, it feels like an elephant is sitting on their chest, okay? What is the first thing you should do? The first thing you should do as a nurse aide. If you can, if you think about it, put yourself 
in that situation. Put yourself in that scenario. A lot of times that's what you have to do when it comes to the written exam. Whatever the scenario is, close your eyes, put yourself in that scenario and imagine or visualize what you would do. So patient tells you that it feels like an elephant is sitting on their chest. What is the first action you would take? Think about it, Dorada. Person is telling you, and it feels like an elephant is sitting on their chest. What is the first action as a CNA you would take? Mahusi. Mahusi. What is HCP? I don't know what HCP is, Valerie. Mahusi, you answered it the very first time. Right, person having chest pain, elephant on their, feels like an elephant is sitting on their chest, right? What do you do? You notify the nurse, immediately notify the nurse, okay? And then, then you'd wanna take the person's vital signs. Now, when notifying the nurse, do you leave that person's side? How do you notify the nurse? How do you notify the nurse? Because you don't want to leave that person's side, right? Because there are other things that, there you go, with the call bell, right? You call bell, call for help, exactly, right? And while you're doing that, while you're calling for help, hey, I need help in room 103, or you, you press that call light, right? If that person's lying flat, Try to put them in a Fowler's position, okay? Put them in a Fowler's position that could help relieve some of that angina, some of that chest pain, okay? After you put them in a Fowler's position, then you can go ahead and start taking their vital signs, right? You're going to want, um, you know, blood pressure. You're going to want the pulse rate. And now here's a good question. When taking the pulse, okay, person's complaining of chest pain, which pulse site will you check? Which pulse site will you check? Person is having chest pain. Which pulse site will you check? Will you check the carotid? Will you check the radio? Will you check the brachial? Will you check the femoral? Will you check the apical? Will you check the popotel? Will you check the tibial pulse? Or the posterior tibial pulse? Okay, think chest pain, Zenobia, chest pain. Which one? Right, because if the person's having chest pain, that could signify a heart attack. So you not only want to be able to count the person's pulse, but you, there we go, apical, right? Because you want to listen, you want to auscultate to see if there's any irregularities, right? Okay. So y'all got to use your critical thinking when it comes to the written exam. Okay. You have to use your critical thinking. All right. Okay. All right, good job, y'all, good job. All right, so again, know the body systems, know what disease processes are related to each body system and know what you as a CNA can do to help relieve, you know, give some relief to that person um, as that's within your scope of practice, okay? Um, so you have to study, you have to invest. If you don't have time, I know some of y'all are probably working. You have families that you need to, you know, take care of, but you have got to find, you have got to invest time. 
okay, outside of your training program, outside of your training class to study, okay? So you can really gain a good understanding, all right? And what's also good too is that you study ahead, right? So whatever topic your instructor is going to be training you on next, Right, because I'm, I'm sure y'all get a syllabus and I'm sure y'all get like a lesson plan so you know which, um, which topics you're going to be discussing on what day or what week, right? So try to get ahead, okay, and study, you know, read up on some of the information that, you know, your, your instructor is going to be training you on for that next week or that next day. You've got to take time. And I always say, you know, give, give yourself an hour. Of, invest one hour every day, okay, for your nurse aid training. Even on the weekend, Saturdays and Sunday, one hour. Now, do you have to spend, you know, that hour continuously studying from one o'clock to two o'clock? No, you don't you know, 10 minutes here, 15 minutes here, five minutes here, right? Whenever you can, but let it total an hour. Let it total an hour because you have to do your part too, right? Us training you, us as instructors training you, um, we're just giving you 50%, okay? And and our 50% is 100%, right? We're, we're going to give you everything that you need and then some but you got to give the other 50% okay that other 50% paying attention in class participating in classroom um, discussions right um, uh, volunteering right when it comes to manual skills volunteering to demonstrate a lot of times I see students just standing back and it's like that's not gonna help you right? because you really have to do it with your hands. You know, watching videos, yeah, is helpful. Uh, reading, reading, you know, the steps of the skills, yes, that is helpful, right? But what is going to benefit you more is you actually using your hands and, and actually doing the skill, okay? Um, you're gonna have to know um, you know, like how to provide special care uh, to residents, right? Like um, uh, someone who is in a coma, right? Someone who's in a coma, um, you know, you have to provide them mouth care. How would you position them, right? Uh, to provide mouth care to that, that person. Does anybody know? I'm going to give y'all a few seconds while I go get some water. When I come back, I want to see some answers, okay? How do you position the person who is in a coma while providing mouth care or before you provide mouth care? Okay, so I'm seeing uh, Fowler's position at 45 degrees. I'm seeing high Fowler's at 90 degrees. I'm seeing semi Fowler's, you know, between 30, around 30, between 30 and 45 degrees. Any other, any other guesses? Okay, I'm gonna write down how I would position the person that's in the coma. Okay, all right. Actually, two ways, two ways you can do this, okay? The best way,
Okay, y'all ready to see my answer? Here we go. So I want y'all to use, I want y'all to use your critical thinking. Okay, I want y'all to use your critical thinking. Why are these two positions the best position to place a person who is in a coma when providing mouth care? Use your critical thinking. What is that person at risk for? Person in a coma, what are they at risk for? There we go. Austin Zenobia. That person is at risk for aspiration, right? The ingestion, direct, you know, ingestion of fluids, blood, vomitus, right? Directly into the lung. So how can we lower that person's risk if they're able to turn them completely on to one side, right? But if that person, let's say that person is, has tubes everywhere, right? Okay, and it's difficult to turn that person completely onto one side. Then you're gonna raise the head of bed, okay, to a semi-fowler's position, turn their head to one side, okay? And then perform mouth care, right? Because you don't want that person aspirating um, any fluids, right? Are y'all following me? So you have to use with your the written knowledge exam, you have to use a combination of your critical thinking, your practical thinking, and your practical thinking is linked to good old common sense, right? Okay. Um, and your nursing judgment. Okay. All right. So that's with the written. Now we're going to talk about the skills. Okay. So how can you um, pass your skills exam? Practice, 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 and practice. Okay. That's how you can pass your skills exam. You cannot pass your skills exam with trying to crash learn them um, in, you know, one week's time or less. Okay. Um, you can't learn all uh, 22 testable skills or 23 testable skills. However, you most. Uh, uh, most uh, uh, authorized administrators are going to have at least 22 testable skills. Um, you, you can't learn all of those overnight, folks. You can't. You can't learn all of them in a one-hour virtual session. You can't, okay? Um, you're going to have to, from day one of training, Right, and I'm hoping and I'm praying that your instructors are, you know, at least within that first week, you know, inform you of who you are testing under and gives you a list of the testable skills, okay, with, you know, the steps, right? Um, don't wait on your instructor to start teaching you the skills. Um, go ahead and start learning on your own, right? You don't have to wait for your instructor to do so. Um, you can go online. Right now, I can go online and type in whatever state, since I'm here in Texas, Texas Nurse Aid Candidate Handbook 2022. And it's going to give me my handbook, right? And I can print that out and I can start at least reviewing the steps on, uh, you know, the required steps, right? On how the state of Texas wants me to perform these skills. Now, you have to keep in mind that 
how you are required to perform uh, skills during testing is not exact to how you are going to perform skills in real life, okay? All right, two totally different uh, things, all right? So for testing, you have to follow what's on here. And if Earth Earth is here, Earth Earth, I got the Kentucky. I found it. I told you, I told Earth Earth the other uh, live stream I had, I, I was like, I'm going to find that skills list for you if it kills me. And I found it the same day. I sure did. So Earth Earth, if you're on here or if you, um, you know, watch the recording of this video, I just want to let you know. I finally found all of your skills for the state of Kentucky. All right, but you want to review your steps. Um, and how I do it, right, when I'm when I'm coaching uh, some of the nurse aid clients, especially if they have a hard time trying to remember, you know, like 20, 21, 23 steps, headmaster, like this one here. Okay, this is the state of Kentucky. Now the state of Kentucky, um, their test is administered through their college system, but they have to give a complete bed bath, okay? And this, this skill, I don't know if y'all can see, has 38 steps, 38. That's a lot of steps, okay? Very intimidating. Hi, Marie Judith. Very intimidating, right? Um, so what I I show you how to do during the nursing uh, virtual coaching sessions is to group to group certain steps together, and that will actually help you uh, retain that information. Remember the steps, right? So now instead of having 38 individual steps to remember, if we group three or four steps together, right? Now you probably only have anywhere from 15 to 18 steps to remember, okay? So you can learn how to do that on your own, okay? And start out with the most simplistic skill, hand hygiene, okay? Start out with that and try to group you know, um, two or three steps together to make it one step, all right? Um, another way, another thing that can help you with um, passing your skills exam is to time yourself on each individual skill. Now, during testing, you're not timed on each individual skill. You're your skills exam is timed as a whole, right? So you're gonna get anywhere from 30 uh, to 40 minutes. Um, I think headmaster in some states, you're given 45 minutes, right? Uh, to perform um, your skills, okay? But if you time each individual skill, okay? That can give you, um, that can give you like a, a clue, a small clue as to how long it will take you to perform a full, um, you know, skills exam, mock skills exam, right? So for instance, like hand hygiene, you want to be able to perform hand hygiene in less than three minutes, okay? That's including, you know, uh, the first step, right? The first step is, addressing the resident and introducing yourself, right? That's the first step in hand hygiene. <clears throat> so you wanna be able to perform that in three minutes, right? Your range of motion exercises, you wanna be able to perform that skill in under three minutes. Um, your ambulation, you wanna be able to perform that in under you know, five minutes, right? So give yourself a goal, okay? Give yourself a goal and say, you know what? For, um, for let's say, um, I think almost every, every, uh, every um, authorized administrator has 
uh, positioning on side, right? Um, so give yourself a goal. Let's say um, you want to uh, perform this skill positioning on side in five minutes. That's your goal, okay? And let's say this is your first time performing this skill and you perform it in seven minutes, all right? Now you got to start trying to learn ways on, you know, how you can cut off, you know, two or three minutes of that time. Because of course, the very first time you perform a skill, you're going to have a lot of hesitation, right? Because you're trying to remember the steps, right? Um, or, and, or you're trying to remember what supplies you need to collect for the skill, right? So time, give yourself a goal and then time yourself for each individual skill until you have meet or met or surpassed that time goal that you gave to yourself, okay? Then you need to know what supplies to collect for each individual skill. So if you have like, um, let's say, there's like your range of motion exercises, you don't have no supplies to collect, right? Your respirations, your pulse, no supplies to collect. Um, if you're with Pearson View or Prudentia, uh, you know, weighing the person, you have no supplies to collect. You just ambulate them, uh, you know, to the scale, right? So you're, you're not like physically collecting supplies and bringing them to the bedside, right? So, most of your testable skills, not most of them, but maybe like about, you know, I don't know, 15 skills or so, depending on, you know, how many bedside skills you have, um, you're going to have to collect supplies for. So uh, practice collecting those supplies. And then again, like you do with your skills, give yourself a, a time goal on, you know, how long you want to take to collect supplies for modified bed bath or partial bed bath or abbreviated bed bath or for Kentucky, a full uh, bed bath, right? How long does it take me to collect these supplies? You know, give yourself a goal first. I want to be able to collect, you know, all the supplies for catheter care um, in under 20 seconds, right? And then start practicing collecting those supplies until you have met or surpassed that, you know, under, you know, 20 seconds or less, right? These are things that you can do for yourself. This is how you can invest in, you know, your state certification exam, okay? Um, and then you want to actually perform a mock test, right? And you start out small, okay? Start out small with like, um, you know, I, I'm excluding headmaster now, okay? Excluding headmaster um, with, you know, Pearson View, Credentia, and Prometric, right? Uh, give yourself hand hygiene because, you know, that's going to be the first skill that you perform if you're testing under Pearson View, Credentia, or Prometric, okay? Hand hygiene is always going to be your first skill. And then give yourself a measurement skill, okay? Just those two, two little skills right there, right? That will actually help you because let's say you have hand hygiene and radio pulse, okay? You know you want to be able to perform hand hygiene in under three minutes. You want to be able to perform um, well, you, I'm, let's forget about radio pulse because a lot of people have problems with radio pulse. We're going to say respirations, okay? You should be able to uh, perform counting and recording respirations in under three minutes also, okay? Four minutes tops, okay? So those two skills you want to be able to perform in conjunction with each other um, in six to seven minutes, no more than seven minutes, okay? So you got two skills out the way. You still have three skills to go. If you're given 30 minutes to perform your test, right? You, let's say you perform hand hygiene and respirations in seven minutes. 
you still have 23 minutes, right, to perform those other three skills, okay? Um, where can you shave time? You can shave time, one, by knowing what supplies to get. So when you're at that supply table or you're at the bedside, right, wherever the supplies are um, located, you're not standing there wasting time thinking about, you know, do I need four washcloths or do I just need three washcloths? Do I need two towels or just one, right? So it's important for you to know what supplies go with what skill, okay? Um, again, knowing how you're going to navigate your landscape, right? Now, a lot of you are not going to know um, what the test site is going to look like, right? Unless you've been there before, right? Okay, so you're really not going to know. Um, so when that the NAE gives you the opportunity to, you know, look at the supplies, test out the equipment, do it. Okay, do it. Even if you don't think that you need to do it. <laughs> okay, um, this is your time to actually scope out that landscape, right? And figure out how you're going to navigate, right? From the bed, you know, to the sink, you know, from the bed to the a waste bin from the bed to the, you know, soiled uh, linen cart, right? Is You're just going to be able to learn how to navigate, okay? See where everything is situated. Where, where's, what side of the bed is most of my equipment on? You know, like, where's the call light at? Where's the remote control for the bed? Where's the privacy curtain, right? Wherever you have the most supplies or equipment, that's the side of the bed that you want to be on to begin with, okay? Now, depending on what scenario you have, uh, then you may have to move to the other side to perform that certain skill, especially if it's, you know, like, you know, dressing or uh, range of motion exercises, right? Okay. Um, another way to invest in uh, passing your skills exam um, again, you know, if your if your instructor allows you to check out equipment and supplies, right? Do it. Take her or him up on his or her offer and check out those supplies so you can have the actual supply to practice with at home. Now, <clears throat> If your instructor does not allow, because not every instructor allows, you know, students to check out supplies and take them home because we're responsible for those, okay, supplies, right? Um, you can always use supplies that, or, you know, items that are in your house, okay, to substitute for actual supplies. And I did a live stream on that showing you all right? Um, you know, you can use a baking pan as a bed pan, right? Substitute it for that, right? And then on one end of the, um, you know, baking pan, you know, put some tape on there and write narrow. And then on another end, put wide. So that way you'll know which way to face the bed pan when placing it, right? Because you have to place it correctly, okay? Um, if you have someone in your household, okay, ask them to act as the resident for you, okay? If you don't have anyone else in your household, if you're the only one uh, that's living in your home, um, get a friend to come over, okay? Get a friend to come over and, you know, practice with you. If you're in, a, you're currently in a training program, get together with your classmates. And say, hey, you know what, this Saturday uh, from, you know, whatever time, you know, from um, three to five or from six to eight, whatever time from eight in the morning to 10 in the morning, um, I'm going to be practicing. Who all wants to come, right? And then the following weekend, it can, you know, practice can be at somebody else's house, right? But you all have to take the initiative. You all have to have the motivation. You all have to have or the passion to want to invest 
in your future. Okay, because your instructor, your instructor invests in your future by training you and teaching you and giving you the information and the knowledge that you need. But you have to invest in your future so you can gain a good, sound understanding, okay, of what your instructor has trained you to do. All right. Um, what else? I'm trying to think. Um, watching videos, right? Um, again, if you watch videos over and over and over again, you know, I have a lot of subscribers that tell me, Ms., you know, Nurse Jar, when I get into that testing room and I start, you know, performing a skill, all I can hear is your voice, right? Is your voice telling me what I need to do next? Why do they hear my voice? Because they have watched my videos over more than once and over more than twice and over more than three times again and again and again. Okay, so, you know, is my voice is stuck in their head for whatever skills they're going to be performing. Okay. Um, what else? Yeah, I think, you know, that's, that's basically it, guys. How, how to invest in your written portion of your exam and how to invest in your uh, manual skills exam, okay? You have got to do some of the investing too. It's not just on us, the instructors, you know, it's not. And you the best time to start investing is day one of your training, day one, okay? And day one, if your instructor doesn't tell you who your authorized administrator is, you know, who you're going to be testing under, if they don't tell you about, you know, what your testable skills are, then ask them, okay? Ask them, right? Let them know, hey, I want to start like looking over this stuff, you know, can you give us a list or at least tell us where to go? And if they don't, get up on Google. Go to Google and search. All you gotta do is type in your state and then Nurse Aid Candidate Handbook 2022. And it's gonna pop up, okay? And your authorized administrator is gonna pop up too because that's where you're gonna be getting your, your um, candidate handbook from or your skills checklist from. Y'all have got to invest too. And you gotta start investing day one of your training. Don't wait. Don't wait until you have successfully completed your training and now you have one week until your test. Now you want to start investing? Guys, come on now. Come on, okay? Um, whether you're, you know, um, I, I've had like the nurse aid clients that I have had uh, to purchase my virtual sessions, I have been impressed uh, with the majority of them because they have invested um, in passing, you know, their certification exam. They've gone out, you know, like the little table uh, that I had, you know, shown y'all. As a matter of fact, let me, I'm gonna bring this around here so y'all can see, okay? I'm gonna go into my office. Let me turn on that. Now I showed y'all this in um, a previous live stream, okay? If y'all see, right? I got this part from Amazon, okay? It was like $29, I think. And you know, I have all the actual supplies, but like I said, if you don't have the actual supplies, use household items, okay? And then I got this little fold-up table right here, this one right here, okay, that I'm going to use as the overbed table, right? And I got this for, um, to help, you know, nurse aid clients when I um, hold the virtual training sessions with them. But a lot of them had similar uh, setups, right? Even if it wasn't the same exact thing, right? They had like, some of them already had gate belts. Um, you know, one uh, pretty, she, you know, her blood pressure 
cuff wasn't working. And um, when we took a 15 minute break, cause she, I think she did like a two or three hour session with me. Um, we took a little short break and she left her home, her and her daughter went to a local Walgreens to buy a new blood pressure cuff. Okay, and got back in time, right? It was only a 15 minute break, got back in time. That is investing in your future. And that, 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 what Pretty did was the model, okay, for um, how you need to invest. I'm not telling you to run out and go buy blood pressure, right? But the passion that she had to succeed she invested in it. She did whatever she had to do, right? Because she knew she wanted to pass the first time, okay? And she did, okay? She did. Um, the same thing for Nizeth, right? Um, she had, you know, she had a blood pressure cuff. She had the stethoscope. She had the gait belt. Um, you know, she used the tube sock. Uh, for the knee-high stocking, right? They did every, they did what they had to do, okay, um, to invest um, in their success. Whether it was a free 30-minute virtual session or a paid one-hour session, they, they did it, okay? They did it. Um, so whether, you know, you invest with free whether you invest with paid, as long as you just invest, okay, you got to do it. Um, because like I said in the previous live stream, you are the only person in control of your future. You're the one that's making, um, you know, the decisions and the choices, right? And usually what you put in to your future or your success, what you invest, how much you invest, how you invest, that's what you're going to get back, right? That's what you're going to get back. So if you don't, if you don't invest, you're usually not going to do well on your exam, right? If you don't study, if you don't, you know, pay attention in class, if you don't participate in, you know, classroom discussions, um, if you don't watch videos, if you don't review, you know, the skills set, if you don't study your nursing theory for the written, you know, if you don't practice, you know, um, you know, your practical thinking and your critical thinking skills, if you don't invest in doing that, what do you think your results are going to be on the test? What do you think you're going to get back? Right. Think about it. Okay. Think about it. Um, all right, guys. Let me see. Zenobia. Um, Um, I'm not quite understanding your question, Zenobia. So what what I'm what I'm understanding, what you're asking is that um, like with hand hygiene, correct me if I'm wrong, Zenobia, if you're still in here, but you're saying with hand hygiene, do they check, does the NAE check your hand under like that? ultraviolet light, they are not supposed to do that, okay? They, they can't, they, they're not supposed to do that. Um, just like with, you know, raising the skills where you have to raise uh, the head of bed to, you know, between a 75 to 90 degree angle, right, for high fowlers. Um, they, they don't have an instrument to actually um, measure right, what angle the bed is in. And even if they did, they cannot. They're not allowed to do that. So if I'm understanding your question right, um, 
evaluators are not allowed to do that, just as they're not allowed to put a, you know, a thermometer, um, you know, under your running water, right? Because you're supposed to wash your hands in tepid or moderate water, any bath skills, you know, moderate water or warm water. They can't put, you know, a thermometer to see what the water temperature is. So they're not allowed to do that. That's the first time I've ever heard of anything like that. Um, so no, that's that's a big no no. Um, Raya's little angel. Awesome, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much for the recommendations. Oh, you know what? There is one thing I need to tell you all for the Prometric video performs foot care. I made a little boo-boo, so I'm gonna have to do that video over. Um, I did not have the resident to test the water, right? So I tested the water, but when I got back to the resident, I forgot to have them to test the water, okay? So keep that in mind. For any water skill, you have to test the water first. And then when you get back to the bedside, you have to have the resident to test the water, okay? So an observant subscriber um, had actually uh, saw that and, and asked me about it, right? And I'm like, oh, shoot, let me watch this again. And I didn't. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Right, so see, even Nurse Jar makes mistakes, right? Okay, so, but just keep that in mind, okay? Um, all water skills, you know, your bath skills, peri care, catheter care, foot care, hand and nail care, um, you have to test the water first, and then you have the client or resident to test the water, okay? So don't forget that. Um, congratulations, Riaz. Everybody tell Riaz, little angel, congratulations. She passed her exam. And thank you, Riaz, little angel, for recommending my channel. I really appreciate that. Um, um, I don't know, Jocelyn, I don't know what test you take in class. Um, the tests that you take in class are probably just, you know, preparation tests. Um, and I think the state of Georgia, you're, are you Credentia or Pearson View, the state of Georgia? I can't remember. Um, congratulations, Diana, on passing your written the first time. All right, and you took your uh, test under Pearson View today. Awesome. Yeah, it used to be Pearson View. Um, you used to get your results like right after you tested, but now they're they have like a twenty four hour waiting period. But you usually get it before the twenty four hours is up. So congratulations to you, Diana, on your written test. Everybody, tell Diana congrats. And good luck on her skills. We're going to be keeping our fingers, toes, and our eyes crossed, okay, that you get a pass on your skills, okay? I, Jocelyn, I don't know what test, you know, how your tests are in your school, you know, so I, I really can't answer that question. Um, all I can tell you is that, um, you know, most instructors, we, you know, give you a prep test to take, um, you know, whether it's the same, you know, as the, um, your actual skills test. Um, I don't know because I don't know what your, you know, the context of your tests are in class. Okay. Thank you, Jocelyn. Thank you for loving my videos. Yeah, um, Zenobio, what state are you in and who do you test under? Because no nurse aid evaluator is allowed to do that. And if they were to do that, um, I would definitely contact 
um, your authorized administrator to let them know that you have a, a nurse aid evaluator uh, testing, um, you know, using the ultraviolet light uh, to check your hands, right, after hand hygiene. That's a no-no, okay? Big no-no. Um, So Jocelyn, um, I'll give you um, a tip on that, okay? So for anyone doing manual blood pressure, okay? Your cue to start, I mean, really start listening for the Karatkov sound is when you see the needle, right? Starting to pulsate, right? Because when you, you know, you inflate the cuff and when you start releasing it, the needle is like this. Once it starts to pulsate, that's your cue to really start to listen, okay, for that Karatkov sound. Because as soon as it pulsates, shortly afterwards, you're going to start hearing it, okay? You'll start hearing the Karatkov sound. So that's just the cue. Now, you don't, you don't go by the pulsation of the needle, okay, for, you know, uh, measuring the blood pressure. Okay, so I want to make that clear. You have to go by the Karatkov sound that, or maybe it sounds like a whoosh, 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 or it can sound like a, right? There's different sounds that you may hear, okay, um, for the Karatkov sound. So just once you start seeing the needle pulsate, Start focusing on listening for that sound because it's, it's going to be coming up soon, okay, afterwards. Um, yeah, um, yeah, Janine, I'll, I'll put my um, email address in um, the chat in just a sec, okay? Um, Mm hmm. I don't use books, Dorada. <laughs> I'm not a. Uh, yeah, I don't use books. You know, um, like we we have books in library, but I I don't use those. Um, and the reason I don't is because they have they have more information. Um, so much more information in the book that you're actually going to need um, as a nurse aide, you know. Um, and I that sounds, you know, I don't want that to sound bad, but a lot of times with all, like with Mosby's, like some of that information is nursing 101. And a lot of times it will confuse the nurse aide student when it comes to their scope of practice. Um, so I'm the type of instructor. I mean, I've I've never taught out of a book. I've never instructed out of a book. The many years that I've been teaching, I have never ever taught out of the book. Um, but you know, you have some residents who do, and that's fine. Okay, that's what the book is for. Um, Yeah, um, so you're gonna, Mahusi, you're gonna have, like when you perform skills that are required to be performed on the mannequin, you're gonna have some nurse aid evaluators who will speak for the mannequin. And then you're going to have some who do not, okay? So if you're performing a skill on a mannequin and you knock on the door, Right. We all know the mannequin ain't going to answer you, right? <laughs> At least we hope the mannequin is not going to answer you. Um, but if that NAE does not speak up for the mannequin, just knock one more time. If the NAE still does not, go ahead and enter. Um, when you're having the mannequin, you know, after you have tested the water and you're um, having the mannequin to test the water, all you have to do is hold of the basin, the wash or bath basin 
uh, near the resident's hand and say, hey, you know, Mrs. Jones, I've already tested the water. It feels good to me. I would like for you to test it now, okay, to make sure it's a comfortable temperature for you. If the NAE doesn't speak up for the mannequin, then just say, oh, okay, it's okay, Mrs. Jones. Awesome. Bam, that's it, okay? Um, Diana, are you saying you're in Michigan? Or no, myocardial infarction, I'm sorry. Zenobia is in Maryland. Okay, yeah. Zenobia, I don't, I don't know why your instructor would tell you that um, because the NAEs are not allowed. Let me see. Do you, who does Maryland? Uh, let me see something. Yeah. Yeah, Maryland is Credentia, um, Zenobia. So you're testing under Credentia. Uh, no, I, I don't care who you test under, okay? Peer review, Credentia, Prometric, Headmaster, or even like if your you know, college system administers your testing, like in the state of Kentucky, the nurse aid evaluator or proctor is not authorized to use an ultraviolet light to, you know, after you have washed your hands. Like that's crazy. Okay. They're not supposed to use a thermometer to test the, you know, water temperature. They're not allowed to use the little um, angle gauge, little apparatus, right, to see uh, what angle or degree uh, you raise the head of bed. At. They're not supposed to use any of that. And if they do, if they do, please contact your, um, your authorized administrator and let them know, okay? They're gonna need the name of the evaluator, the testing site, the date, the time, and exactly what that NAE did, okay? Yeah, CBA is a stroke. All right. Yep, tell the nurse. All right, Jocelyn, you're with Credentia also. Um, so you know what, I'm gonna put this, this is the only site that I uh, refer my students to when it comes to um, the written knowledge exam, okay? So cna.plus, okay? That's the only site they have. Um, it used to be free, okay? But now, um, like, to have access to all of the practice tests that they have on there, um, you have to pay for a subscription. But they do have, like, a handful of tests that are still free. Um, so that is the only site um, that I refer my students to. So if you just, you know, in the um, address box on your, um, um, you know, Google or what, whatever your internet provider is, uh, not provider, y'all know what I'm talking about. When you go in the address, like when you open up the web, okay, the World Wide Web in the address, just type in cna.plus, okay, and it will take you to their website. Um, the reason why I like them is because, you know, every, um, every I think every five years, I know with Pearson View and, and Credentia, they update uh, their tests. Sometimes they may do it, you know, intermittently, like before the five years, but it's usually every five years, they update the written uh, portion of the CEP. Um, and CNA.plus actually, whenever they up, update it, they update their, <coughs> excuse me, their questions also, okay? So yeah, check out that site. Like I said, uh, to get access for all of their, you know, practice tests, you have to pay for a subscription now. Uh, however, they still have a handful of tests uh, that you can, you know, uh, practice for free and it's online, okay? That's to reel you in to purchasing a subscription, but they're, they're good. That's the only site that I recommend. Okay, guys, I'm gonna get ready to um, 
put in my email address. There we go. Okay, that's my email address. Um, if y'all have any questions, um, this link that I'm throwing in there now is poor, poor is for um, that. That's the link uh, that goes uh, straight to my booking site. Okay, for uh, the nurse aid exam prep um, virtual uh, coaching sessions. Okay, um, the third free thirty minute sessions are no more. I may do that again sometime. You know, just to rev up. Uh, more clients, you know, sometime in the future. Uh, but uh, right now, um, I'm not offering the 30, the free 30 minute virtual coaching sessions. Okay, that ended on Friday. Uh, the hourly um, coaching sessions are no longer $25 an hour. I told y'all, I told y'all to go ahead, <laughs> go ahead and Book your sessions at the $25 an hour rate, right? Because on the 13th of April, um, you know, that $25 was just for promotional uh, to introduce my virtual coaching um, after April 13th. And I actually extended it a couple of days. I think on April uh, 16th, um, you know, that's when I actually increased back to the regular price of $55 an hour. Um, however, um, there is a coupon, I think I want to say it's 25% off. It's either 20, I can't remember my own coupons, guys, I'm sorry. It's either 20 or 25% off. Um, so if you purchase now, um, before April 30th, that's when the coupon will be discontinued, okay? April 30th is the last day for the, it's either 20 or 25% off the $55 an hour, okay? Um, and I think it's for the first five sessions that you book. Uh, some people just need one session, you know, you have to gauge, um, you know, how many sessions you're actually going to need. You can gauge that by, you know, knowing what are your challenges, right? Um, if you're, you know, you have challenges with the written exam, uh, probably one or two virtual sessions uh, will help you. Um, if you're having challenges with maybe like, you know, one or two skills, one virtual session could probably help you, depending on what the skills are and you know, how in depth your challenge is. Um, if you're having challenges with, you know, a handful of skills, you may need three to five virtual coaching sessions. If you're having your challenges is with time management, um, maybe three sessions, three or four sessions, depending on, you know, what your obstacle is, what's causing you to, um, um, you know, have issues with with time. All right. So, I mean, you're the, you're the only judge of that to know, you know, what your challenges are and how many sessions you may need. Um, um, Jocelyn, you just got to have a good ear, uh, you know. Um, some some karak cough sounds are going to be very loud. Uh, you know, others are going to be. You know, you'll you'll be able to hear them. Um, and then some karak cough sounds are going to be really soft. You just have to concentrate. You know, on um, hearing. And like I said, you know, there's different karak cough sounds. You have some that sound like this, like a knocking. You have some that sounds like a whoosh, 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 right? Y'all like that? Y'all like that sound effect? Whoosh, whoosh. 
<laughs> um, you have some, some that may sound like a, you know, like a clicking type. Um, so you, you just have to train your ear. Um, there, you know, if you go on YouTube and search um, Karatka sounds, let's see. Let me see if I spelled that right. K O R. Yeah. If you go on YouTube and search Karatkov sounds, um, there are several videos on there that um, will show you or or you know will demonstrate the different sounds. They'll have like a video on it. And then there's one. Um, hold on one second. Let me see if I can find it. Um, Let's see. There is one. Hold on, guys. I'm trying to find. I don't know if this is it. Nope. There is one video that I show my students um all the time that helps them with um the blood pressure and i can't remember oh here it is yay i found it okay so let me copy this link okay wait let me make sure yeah this is it okay so um let's see blood pressure practice Okay, and so this is um, really the only uh, blood pressure video that I um, have my students uh, to use to practice, right? Um, you know, hearing that, coordinating the Karatkov sound to the actual uh, gauge on the blood pressure. And then there's also, um, if I can remember, um, oops. Um, let me see. There's, um, dang, I can't remember. There's, there's a site where Ah, I wish I could remember it. Where um, it's gonna have um, like you can also uh, practice blood pressure, but usually the link that I just put in there, um, I'll have my students, you, you know, practice. We do it in class together, right? And that's how they practice, um, you know correlating the Karatkov sound with the numbers on the gauge, right, to get the measurement. And then I have them, I set up computers and it's a site and I have it written down on my board in my classroom, um, but it's a site that um, it gives you like um, several different scenarios, um, you know, the patient's age and they have, you know, particular disease process going on, or maybe a healthy patient. Um, and, you know, you actually, it's like a test, like you can do the blood pressure, you have to listen, and then you have to type in uh, the blood pressure. Um, if I can remember, I, can, I just can't remember that site. I'm so sorry. Okay. Um, all right. So hopefully, Jocelyn, that helps you. And again, like I said, um, once you start seeing the, the needle of the gauge pulsating, that is your cue to get your ease keen on listening for that sound because the Karatkov sound will come soon after uh, 
the needle starts pulsating. Okay, and again, guys, do not go by that pulsating of the needle to get your measurement. Okay, you have to hear that Karakov sound. The first time you hear it, that's the systolic number or the top number. The first time you no longer hear it, that will be your diastolic measurement or the bottom number, okay? All right, guys, so you have my email address here. You have my booking site link here. Again, invest in your future. The best time to start investing in your future or your success to pass your state certification exam um, is day one of training. Okay, you got to invest. We as instructors, we invest in you. Okay, that's what we do when we're instructing you and we're training you. Okay, we're investing our time, our knowledge, our energy, our experience in you. You have to invest in yourself. Okay, you got to invest in yourself. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this live stream. And oh, my memberships, hold up. Don't leave yet. Don't leave my membership. Okay, I have the um, investor member, the elite investor, and the um, inimitable investor members. The investor member is $2.99 a month. The elite investor is $4.99 a month, and the inimitable investor is $9.99 a month. You're welcome, Jocelyn. As an investor member, you will um, have access to members only live streams, and the majority of their live streams is going to be very similar to this live stream where I'm going to get really in depth um, with how to you know, be successful in your training program and uh, with testing um, and also doing live streams uh, regarding what do you do after testing, right? You've tested, you become certified, now what, right? How to dress for interviews, uh, you know, interview questions and the best response that you could give uh, for those questions. Because y'all know at CNAs, your interviews, the majority of those questions are going to be scenario based. What would you do if, right? Okay. Um, so that's $2.99 a month. Um, if you join up for the elite investor member, you will not only have access to members only live streams, but you will have access to members only videos. And I've already uploaded the first members only video. And it is a video that you will want to watch because I break down the opening procedures and the initial indirect care skills or behaviors, right? Why it's so important, uh, why your opening procedures is so important based on those initial indirect care skills. It's a must see members only video. You can't see it if you're not at least an elite member, okay? That membership is $4.99 a month. And y'all keep in mind, this is monthly, okay? Monthly. Um, and then the um, inimitable member, okay? membership, that's $9.99 a month. You're not only going to have access to uh, members only live streams, you're not only going to have access to members only videos, but you are going to receive priority responses from me, okay? So if you comment or um, ask a questions, um, you ask a question or questions, um, on my YouTube channel, I will respond to you within four hours. Right now, um, I respond like within 24 to 48 hours, okay? So it's, that's going to be a challenge for me, okay? But I will do it, right? Because if you're investing, um, you know, if you're investing in your future by signing up as an inimitable um, investor, 
right? Member, I'm going to invest so much more into you also, okay? So uh, priority response. Um, you will also, also um, re receive or have, um, what? Um, ah, like access, right? Uh, you'll be the first to have, uh, you know, view the videos, right? So no other subscribers. Any videos that I drop that are general in nature, um, you will have first view of that video for one full week, okay? So you're gonna see it, be able to see it before all of my other thousands of subscribers see it, okay? And then the best exclusive perk of all for the inimitable investor member is that you will have the opportunity to virtually video collaborate with me. Oh, I'm so excited, right? So excited. So what does that mean? It means that I'm gonna be putting you in the spotlight, okay? That's my show of appreciation to you for supporting my channel. Um, you know, you can do a video clip, um, you know, uh, discussing your, uh, your successes. Um, you can do a video clip um, discussing your challenges, right? Um, you can do a short intro video clip for one of my upcoming videos, right? So what you'll do is you'll email me the video clip, we'll collaborate together on it, um, and then I'll upload it uh, to my YouTube channel, right? Put you in the spotlight for a little bit, right? Just to show my appreciation, okay? So again, the investor member, $2.99 a month, the elite investor membership, $4.99 a month, and the inimitable investor membership, $9.99 a month. Guys, I'm still working on um, my online nurse aid exam prep course. Um, you know, I probably won't get done with that until um, maybe the summertime. So that the online course, uh, probably will not be ready until the summertime, probably next fall, okay? Because I'm, I'm putting a lot into it. I'm also going to be developing or constructing um, a nurse aid, an online nurse aid refresher course. This is not a certification course, okay? Um, it's not a formal certification course. It's not going to get you um, certified, okay? Um, this, this is just, you know, maybe you've been out um, of class for a while and you just need some refresher training on nursing theory um, or maybe even, um, you know, your, your skills or nursing tasks, okay? Um, so that's upcoming, um, an upcoming course that I'll be doing also, okay? So right now, all I'm doing is the virtual coaching. Invest, invest invest in your future. All right, guys, if y'all don't have any more questions or comments, I'm going to go ahead and end this live stream. I hope, um, I hope this live stream, I'm sorry. I hope this live stream uh, was, you know, helpful to you all. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up, okay? Uh, this will let me know that you are liking, um, you know, this type of video content and it lets me know whether uh, to do more videos like this or to squash it, not do any, okay? All right, so you all have a good evening. Again, y'all got to start investing um, in your certification exam, okay? Um, and when, again, Day one of training is when you start investing, right? Because that's when actually we as instructors, we start investing in your success long before the first day, right, of training. We do, okay, with a lot of research, right? We start before uh, the first day of training, but you as nurse aid students, 
Uh, you start investing in your future day one of your training, okay? And use some of those uh, strategies and tips that I shared with you regarding the written um, exam, how to pass your written exam, and how to pass or invest um, in your uh, skills exam, okay? I got to go, guys. It's getting late. Um, I love y'all as always. Okay. Thank you all for being so very loyal. And I hope each and every one of you, um, you know, have a blessed and enjoyable rest of your weekend. Stay safe. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye, my hoosie. See y'all later. Ciao.